My name is Bora Lachi, and I am the project manager here at Impactionable. And I'm going to be walking you through today's event and the steps that we're going to take and just the layout of how the event will go. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce our CEO, Shivani, who will just give more in detail about the, our mission on Impactionable and the importance of the social innovation competition. So Shivani. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Um, thank you so much for having me today. I am going to share my screen and share a little bit about you know, what we do at Impaction and also you know, what we're doing with these social innovation competitions. So first, um, before I get started, I want to thank Kenton Lee, Andrew Krauss, and Emily Allen for their continued partnership that we have grown and sustained over time. We want to thank you for your leadership and the amazing ways that you change lives every day through your own work. So just a little bit about us and I'm going to share my screen um, just to get us started. So essentially, um, Impaction, what we do is we help people find jobs and funding opportunities in the social impact space. We also build meaningful relationships with our amazing partners like Because International to help them grow their talent pipeline and marketing initiatives in this space. So essentially through our work, we're excited to grow our community of doers. Our mission is to create a community that values meaningful relationship and acts on the desire to make the world a better place. So through this, um, we're looking to create a community of people who act and actually do good around the world, no matter where they're located and no matter what sorts of communities that they end up serving. So hosting competitions is actually a key part of our values. Through competitions, we partner with amazing organizations and help fund the doers so they can grow their respective social impact endeavors. We're now in our third year of hosting competitions. So when we first launched our competition in 2019, our winner, Beatrice Caroma, um, was working on building a trash bin made of, out of recycled car tires to combat littering in her town in Sierra Leone. Our winner in 2020, Farah Brunace, um, I might be pronouncing it wrong, and I'm sorry, Farah, if you're watching and I pronounce your name wrong, but she was working on creating the Uber of Wi-Fi, where people could attach a pod on the back of their phones, which would automatically make them a hotspot for Wi-Fi connection. This would not only give them access to the World Wide Web, but would give others who are located in their close proximities access to the internet as well. This was especially helpful for those situated in rural communities. So essentially, the ideas for this partnership with Because International was that we wanted to fund entrepreneurs who wanted to get started. They could have drawn their ideas on the back of a sticky note, taken a picture and submitted it for their application. The process itself didn't matter. All that mattered was the merit and the impact of their idea. All that mattered was that they were going to start somewhere. Sometimes starting is the hardest part of the journey. So the finalists that we will see present today have started and grown their respective sectors. The semi-finalists, some of whom are on this call and who are on the screen right here, have also started and changed lives in their communities. It's important to recognize such talent in this world that we don't often see in the news or even in our daily lives. These doers give us hope. So congratulations to all of the applicants in this competition. Sure, we want to see who wins as this has been our toughest competition yet with 369 applicants. But if we zoom out, especially today, what matters most is that we have started doing good for others around the world. All that matters is that all 369 people have started somewhere. So good luck to the finalists today and to all of our applicants and semi-finalists. Congratulations on your journey. We cannot wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much, Shivani. And again, thank you so much for everyone joining us here today. A little bit about how today is gonna go. I will introduce our judges followed by the five finalists. Each finalist will have five minutes to pitch followed by five minutes Q&A from the judges. 
Once the judges deliberate, we will have five of our partners speak to you and share more about their organization and what they're doing. After that, we'll announce our winner and we'll hopefully wrap up by 1230. So any questions or comments you'll have throughout the event, please answer please chat with us in the chat question or in the Q&A function. So let's begin. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our three judges and bring them on stage virtually, of course. So first is Andrew Crows. He is the president and CEO of Because International. So let's bring Andrew on stage. Perfect. Next, we have Kelsey Otero. She is the associate director of social innovation at Marquette University. And Sarah Hill, the church Suit Suite Administrative Coordinator at Because International. So these are our three judges. Welcome judges, we're happy to have you all here today. Hi, thank Kelsey. you for having us. Of course, thank you guys for being here and thank you for all the hard work you've put through for the past three months that we've been working on this with all of y'all, so thank you. So let's begin. Um, now it is our time to go and hear from our finalists. Okay, hi everyone. So uh, my name is Neha and Vedika and I are co-founders of Educase. Um, because of our South Asian backgrounds, both, at, uh, both Vedika and I are, were very aware of some of the challenges within education in South Asia. The first one is that a lot of students go to government and community schools that lack classroom furniture or have furniture that's not adequate for their needs. The second thing is that primary school students are often under-prioritized, so their educational resources are not given as much attention. And the third thing is, because a lot of these students come from low-income households, they often don't have a study space to use at home. For this reason, it's quite common to see these kinds of setups in schools, in community schools and government schools in South Asia, where, as you can see, students are really leaning on the ground to read and write. And of course, this has consequences, for example, bad posture, poor eyesight, it affects their handwriting, their productivity, and overall hinders their educational performance. So our solution is Educase. It's a portable foldable desk that also serves as a backpack to create a personal study space at school and at home. This is what it looks like in the backpack form and as a desk. And we kept our end user in mind to make sure that it was lightweight, weather resistant, affordable, durable, has storage space, and of course has a smooth writing surface that children can use. Our vision is ultimately to help children, uh, help improve children's learning experiences and increase their access to quality education, particularly for those in most marginalized and remote areas. And we aim to do this using the sustainable development goals to help guide us. So for example, by providing a comfortable and safe learning environment, improving marginalized children's access to education and attendance in school, and ultimately hopefully in the future also focusing particularly on girls' access as we know they are significantly more disadvantaged. Our journey so far, so we've come a long way from when we first started as a project in university where we essentially just had a box file and a bit of cardboard and right away all the way to the end, as you can see, our bright blue Educase that's now kind of fully designed and is actually um, across multiple schools in Nepal. Our customers are not actually the students themselves. Just to be super clear, the students do receive the Educase for free. Our customers are actually organizations and individuals with the funds to provide these to the students. These are, for example, INGOs, NGOs, CSR initiatives, individual donors, local governments, etc. Our revenue model is, like I said, organizations and individuals purchase the Educase and then donate these to the schools in their network. Um, essentially, we have different pricing strategies. For over 100 units, they are 950 rupees per unit, and it goes all the way up to 1500 rupees for a single order of Educase. Our costs are luckily very low. Vedika and I work remotely, and essentially our main costs are the manufacturing and raw material of the bag. And other expenses include logistics, storage space, marketing, and hopefully in the future, some interns, employees to grow our team. Um, because of our low cost structure, we hope that we can break even in year one after selling around 2,200 units. We use several impact metrics to make sure that Educase is actually delivering the impact that we want by keeping in regular contact with our customers. The things that we measure, for example, are classroom flexibility, teacher satisfaction, the improvement in children's posture and comfort, um, the improvements in handwriting, and also the number of hours that are being increased by learning at home. 
So far, we've had a really positive impact. We've distributed Educase to over 185 students in Nepal and have had a huge impact, particularly with teachers who find the flexibility of Educase is one of the key benefits. They can arrange students in lines, in circles, in groups, in pairs. They can stop children from cheating as well from each other. Um, so essentially, it's been a really huge impact. It's also had a huge impact on their posture, their comfort, their handwriting, and particularly during the pandemic, students have been able to use the Educase at home and increase their number of hours of studying at home. In the first year, we really hope to establish our presence in Nepal and reach at least 10,000 students. In year two, our focus is really more expanding to more rural areas of Nepal and continuing to grow our team and expand across South Asia. And number three is really expanding to other markets in South Asia and thinking of new and more innovative ways that we can kind of improve um, solutions for furniture and access to better quality education. What we're looking for from, one, uh, from uh, Because International and the prize money, $1,000 goes a long way in Nepali rupees. So we think that this can help scale our distribution, help grow our team further to give us time to focus on the strategy, patent our design, and essentially use this network of skilled entrepreneurs around the world to help raise awareness of our startup and to learn more from all of these interesting individuals. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neha and Vidika. We'll give the judges a minute just to uh, do their scoring, and then we'll open it up for Q&A from the judges. I might jump in right Go now ahead. as we yeah. Yeah, as we continue to think about this. Um, very interesting. Great job with the presentation. And I will start the questions with this one. Um, tell me a little bit about your biggest obstacle right now. Like what, what's the next step for you? What's keeping you from getting there? Mm -hmm. um, so the biggest obstacle, I think, um, I, it, it is getting better with the pandemic getting better. But I think our biggest obstacle was so far meeting our potential buyers in person because I don't I mean because it's such a new concept especially in Nepal that it's hard for uh, the buyers to understand how the desk is assembled or what's what the feel of the desk is and usually you know they want to get their the return on investment so you know they want to see whether it's actually lightweight or whether it's actually weather resistant would it, will it suit a student so that was our initial challenge and we're getting there because now we can still meet our customers uh, face to face a little bit better than we could, but I think our uh, the next step would be to make sure that inventory is like moving faster. So that I mean, as Neha mentioned, the funds would also help us, you know, move the inventory faster because we have to actually work with two separate kinds of kinds of manufacturer. One is the inner panel of our desk that is made of cardboard, and that. Uh, uh, helps in the lightweight of the desk also, and also backpack manufacturers that eventually assemble the whole thing together. So what, when we have the cardboard moving faster, that helps the inventory move faster as well. So those are, those are the two main challenges we have and we're tackling. Thank you. Where, where is the um, Educase manufactured currently? It's manufactured here in Nepal itself, in Kathmandu. So it's close by, so it's easy for us to monitor quality as well and get like short, smaller batches because uh, we do produce education batches because most uh, organizations prefer logos on the, their personal logos as well when they distribute. So currently we are making them in batches in Kathmandu, Nepal itself. This is um, such a complex issue. Um, what opportunities exist for you guys to work with competition or work with others with maybe totally different products that are also trying to work within the education sector? Uh, that's actually a very interesting question because when we uh, started out designing Educase as just a box file in the beginning, so one of the few things we were looking at was uh, complementary products or things that could also uh, improve access to education. So one of the things which we found was uh, lighting was a big issue at homes for students. And since Educase is one, uh, the, one of the biggest benefits for Educase we saw was the use at home more than at school. So uh, what we 
did see was partner with organizations that provide solar powered uh, solutions, small portable lights that can easily be put into the backpacks and can be given to students. So they have a lighting source at home, which aids educa education as well as, you know, just home things as well, like household chores, which low income families do suffer from. And just to add to that, a couple of the customers that we've had have often used it as almost a kit. Um, so they put some of their own products within there as almost kind of merch, and then they brand it as education, they give it as a kit with all of the essentials for students. So it's been, it has, because it is a bag, essentially, it can be coupled with a lot of complementary products to serve more than just one need. Great, thanks, you guys. Thank you, Neha and Vipika. Any final questions from the judges? Ooh, I might. So many potential questions, uh, but uh, if I can slip one more in. Yes, go ahead. It, it, talk, talk a little bit more about your margins, because your margins are, are 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 pretty tight already. And I and I was going to ask if you are a if you're a nonprofit and NGO, if you rely on a donation model as well. And then I also see as you scale up, it looks like your margins don't improve. You you, you have the same production costs, but talk a little bit about how those economics change as you scale up. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we do we make educase at uh, 620 rupees uh, Nepali rupees so that's just under um, I would say like around four dollars USD I would around four dollars USD not exact calculations but four dollars USD and we sell them for 950 rupees uh, when they order more than 100 units and our costs will go down when we can order more in bulk. Currently, our orders are smaller, so the manufacturers charge us 620 rupees. But um, as we order more than, for example, 1,000 or you know, 2,000 units uh, in one batch, our costs do significantly go down, and our manufacturers do say that it could go down to approximately 500 rupees as well. So that reduces our cost of production and keeping the uh, prices at the same. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Neha and Vidika. And Good evening, everyone. My name is Icho Joshua. I am the founder of Jopika, and I'm from Nigeria. Water scarcity is one of the major problems faced in the world today. Over 1.1 billion people lack access to clean water. A total of 2.7 billion people find water scarce for at least one month of every year. Estimatingly, 6,000 children die from water-related diseases. Diseases such as cholera, diarrhea, typhoid fever, and others. Statistics have shown that 40% of these people live in Sub-Saharan Africa. They depend on groundwater, but the groundwater which they get from water wells and boreholes dry off. Our solution is called Jupiter Explorer. Because groundwater is one of the largest sources of fresh water in the world today, many people depend on groundwater for their survival. Our solution is a technological device called Jupiter Explorer. And it is a simple water finder which is used to locate and manage groundwater for sustainable extraction and use. It is used to locate the best yielding points for clean groundwater. It is fast, affordable, and easy to use. Our vision. Through our GeoPico technology, we have located over 20,000 water wells that yield at least 20,000 liters of water daily. Water is made available for drinking, irrigation, and large-scale animal production. The cost of constructing water wells has also been reduced drastically by 40%, and waterborne diseases such as diarrhea, cholera, and typhoid fever have been reduced, and their mortalities have also been reduced. Our journey. The creation of Jopika was inspired by the continued lack of access to clean water in my town and many other places here in Nigeria. As a first year student of geology, I came up with the idea for the product in 2017. We began our research and development in 2019 when we launched our product and service to the market, particularly 
We provide affordable survey and we also sell the survey equipment. Our targeted customers. Our targeted customers include those people operating in the groundwater resource sector. This includes water contractors, farmers, academic institutions, government agencies, such as the Nigerian Ministry of Water Resources and the Benue State Water and Sanitation Agencies, and generally communities which are in water stress conditions. From 2017, we have invested approximately 15,000 US dollars in Geopica for research and development, acquisition of equipment, and on wages and other assets. We have generated over $9,000 in revenue, as you can see on the chart. 40% of the revenue came from our exploration services. 31% of the revenue came from our product sales and others. We expect to break even by the second quarter of this year. Our key matrices. Our success in the past few years has been determined by the number of successful water wells points located in various communities. We also look at the number of successful water wells drilled and how many people per community have been given access to water. Our current impact, Geopica may be a business driven organization, but we are impact centered. The water wells we have cited so far supply about 20 liters of water daily from each water well. In each of the over 100 communities we have worked in, we have saved a lot of unproductive time, which is spent on searching for water. The clean water we have supplied has also reduced pet risk and mortalities which are associated with dirty water. The clean water has also ensured that irrigation farming and large scale livestock production is achieved in the communities we have operated in. Our journey for the next three years is thus. After breaking even this year, we will increase our production by 20%. And we will expand to three regions of Africa, which include the South, the North, and East. By 2022, we expect to buy a drilling rig, and we also plan to drill about 3,000 water wells by 2023. We intend to increase our staff and deploy our water well management by 2023. And we also want to employ at least 2,000 workers. The picture of our idea. This picture here shows GeoPico Explorer. And the Explorer device is shown in the first picture. The second picture is the ground profile, which we get after our survey. And then the third picture is the exploration which we carry out to get water from the points that are shown from our device. How we are going to spend the $1,000, 50% will be used for research and development of our product, and 20% will be used for international media advertisements. Our biggest challenges currently include obtaining patents and trademarks in other countries to allow us for expansion, because patents and trademarks to protect our product are only valid in the country where we establish or where we build the product. So we need to register our patents and trademarks to protect us if we are going to expand our services. Impaction and because international can help us on our journey through partnership, because there are international organizations that have wide partnership with other organizations in Africa. We want to partner with Impaction and Because International so that we can expand our services. Our core team is shown here and you can see them. We are Jopika and we are business-driven, profit-minded and impact center. Thank you. Thank you so much, Uchor. Thank you. We'll give the judges a minute and then to do their scoring. And once they have a question, please uh, ask them to Uchor. I can kick us off. And again, uh, great job and so many potential questions. It's hard to prioritize here, but let's 
let me focus in on your solution, uh, the product here, which is which is fascinating. You described it as simple, but um, tell me a little more about it. And you could talk talk about um, you could talk about the technology, how it works, how it may be different. Is this a, is this a new and innovative technology, or is this a technology yes. that's applied in a new way? Um, talk about um, how well is it working. You know, what's what's the greatest area for improvement? How accurate is it compared to the alternatives? I'm going to stop there. I'll let you choose what direction to head in, but I'm very interested to hear more about the solution itself. All right. So before water wells are located, we must carry out what is called geophysical survey to determine where the water is located on the ground. And that is where our product comes in. Our device is simple because it uses electrical resistivity. It sends electricity into the ground and it records the variation. So from there, we are able to analyze the data using our software. And then we are able to show where the water is on the ground. Depending on the variabilities in the resistivity, we determine the hydrogeophysical potential of the subsurface. So from the profile, we are able to show where the water is and where we can extract it. Now, Exploration in geophysics is extremely costly. And that is why people don't explore. And when you don't explore before drilling your wells, they dry. In fact, you can explore and get wells that can bring out water automatically. And such wells are called artesian wells. Most people in Sub-Saharan Africa depend on groundwater. In India, over 60% of the water got used for irrigation is groundwater. So there's need to carry out proper geophysical survey before. Yeah, uh, the wells are drilled. Our device so far is one of the most low cost devices, uh, geophysical survey tools on the market because it costs only $120 against the other geophysical survey, which the least you can get is $10,000 US dollars. We have worked on this solution from the geophysical perspective. We have developed it carefully and we have filed for patents in our country here in Nigeria. It has been used to explore over 200 wells here, and about 150 of the wells we surveyed all brought water, and the water yields about 20 percent. The wells yield about 20,000 liters of water daily for the communities. Thank you. Very good. I have a question. What are your biggest needs in this upcoming year? Besides, besides maybe finances, where are some areas that you're lacking that you could use some advice? Some What, what other things are, are you needing? Yes. Because our idea is original, we need intellectual property protection against plagiarism. Because right now, we have not begun selling this uh, device to international countries because of fear of plagiarism. So currently we are working on the acquisition of patents in the South, North and East of Africa so that we can protect our technology from being plagiarized. So that is one of our biggest challenges. Thanks for sharing this. Can you go back to your customers for a second? Customer segment? Yeah. So, and, I, and and hopefully you can tell me this a little bit more. Who reaches out to you guys to do the exploration and, and use this technology initially? So, basically, the government needs water. International organizations such as UNICEF always deploy water projects. But here in Nigeria, most of the, uh, the wells are not functional because after drilling, all the wells do not yield. So international organizations reach out to us, communities in water stress conditions reach out to us, government agencies here in Nigeria, such as the Ministry of Water Resources and the uh, uh, Rural Water Development Agencies, they reach out to us. Academic institutions that are also engaged in research about groundwater also reach out to us because the equipment are not even available in Africa to carry out trainings, for students in academic institutions. Farmers who lack access to clean water for irrigation and livestock rearing, they reach out to us. 
So most times we are always busy and engaged in carrying out explorations and uh, uh, citing water wells. Excellent. Last question. How did your team meet and form? What? How did your team, how did you guys all meet? Oh, we all met as students in the okay. University of Joss. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. Judges, Andrew, you have another question? Can I sneak one in one yes, more? One more. Uh, a little bit more about your model, because again, it seems like you could go in a number of different directions. Mm -hmm. Are you selling? Are you selling the product itself? Are you providing the service? I see that in your growth plans, you talk about maybe even acquiring drilling equipment. So you would, so you would do the drilling as well. Talk a little yes. bit more about that. Because we are geologists, our team is made up of a, a variety of expertise. So we have geophysicists in my team. We have hydrogeologists in my team. We have an exploration geophysicist in my team. So um, our team, basically, we offer, we sell the product, we manufacture the product. And since it's technically inclined, we offer the services. And we also, when bringing in uh, drilling companies to carry out drilling at reduced prices, the drilling companies give us commissions of about 10% from the amount they are paid to carry out the drilling. So we also generate revenue from that. And we also offer technical services, analysis, and consultations for our geophysical equipment. For those we have sold to, they send profiles to us and we analyze and it comes frequently. Great, thanks again. Thank you so much, Ichor. Thank you, judges. Uh, well, I'm, I'm Ishmael Isome. I'm the founder of Medibe Nature. Our initiative is, uh, is about the recycling of marine and urban plastic waste into, into eco boat. And, uh, and it could be in. Next slide, please. In Cameroon, we have a, we have a, a great problem of pollution. Every year, up to 600 metric tons of plastic get into nature with less than 10% that uh, recycle. Uh, so we have a lack of recycling, concrete recycling system. Uh, we, we also uh, don't have a, we have a lack of both things. Uh, in Cameroon, we have 80% of population that are farmer and uh, around 300,000 uh, households depend on fishing. And uh, within this community, we have many people that are in need of, uh, of both. Uh, even if Cameroon is a Congo Basin country uh, with uh, 500 kilometer seashore, we have few uh, leisure activities on the beach. So. Our solution is about uh, creating social initiative to uh, bring together communities and build uh, affordable eco boat to, to support those uh, young people to go about their business, as well as accompanying the, uh, the, gov the local government as with uh, city halls in installing a kind of solid uh, sustainable system of uh, sorting of waste from, from the household. And we also promote leisure activities using our eco boat to, to boost a kind of local ecotourism on, on the beaches. Our, our, our customers are the government as well. Uh, we also work with uh, companies uh, in the removal and recycling of, of waste. We, we, we work with a school where we promote our education and environmental education program as well as uh, in the recycling and the promotion of growing business. Please, next slide. Next slide, please. Can you hear me? Yes. So this is a, this is how Madiba, Madiba Nature is, is organizing uh, his, his, his uh, work on, on the field. Now, the challenges we, we have uh, is, is to bring our product to fishermen, is to bring our initiative to the large community of Douala. Since Douala is uh, uh, 5 million plus uh, people with, without a kind of recycling and concrete system, our initiative aim to, to promote these, uh, these systems. 
So our economy model is a six stream. We have make money out of the services provided in the recycling. We sell the boats, we sell the eco bean, we, we, we promote the, the, the eco tourism on the field. We have now around 300 people that are, are coming into our system each year. For, for the, the, can you hear me? Yes, we can, yes. Yes, we can. Okay, because I don't have my slide. Uh, yeah, as I said, we, we, we make money to our six stream by selling plastic raw material, by selling eco boat, by selling eco bean. And now for the next three years, our goal is to perform our mobile app that is Madiba Nature you can find on Play Store that allow the selective sorting of waste in household in company where people can download and install our, our app. Through the app, they can send us messages and images and our company remove the waste directly from household. The app also uh, is a platform to share information to people in the climate and ecology in order to boost a kind of, uh, to raise environmental awareness locally. Then the next, uh, the second year will be to the promotion of our boat in many fisheries. Right now we are in six fisheries in Cameroon on the coast, but Cameroon have more than 200 villages involved in fishing. We are just in six and our next goal is to expand our product within all the community. The project in Douala and Yaoundé is working, is installed in 15 secondary schools where we are able to impact more than 150,000 students each year. That's our next, our next goals. What are we wearing for uh, uh, impaction and, and uh, because is with uh, the 1,000 US dollar, we will, we will try to have more than 5,000 plus users of our app that would allow us to install around 200 eco bin and be able to collect more than, more than 200 tons of plastics. Right now, our organization collect 100 tons of plastic each year. And uh, also to uh, boost our training system with the, within the fishing community and the, and the other people. So thank you and sorry for your connection. No, thank you so much, Ismail. Really appreciate, thank you. Thank you so much, Ismail. Really appreciate, thank you. Let me start with this question. How many times did you ate street food in your life? Did you like it? Well, let me tell you that there's a friend that can live on that food and probably in your stomach now. And it's called Tainia solium that produces cysticercosis disease. But what is it? Cysticercosis is a disease caused by consuming the eggs of Tainia solium parasite by fecal oil root for not having good hygiene measures. This disease may develop without showing symptoms after months or even years of eating them, and may be present itself in eyes, muscles, and the brain, causing death. The highest rates of infection are found in areas of Latin America, Asia, and Africa that have poor sanitization and free-raging pigs that have access to human feces. This whole initiative starts because of her. Her name is Leticia, mother of one of my friends, who sadly passed away from neurocysticercosis last year. Leticia, and more than 50,000 people who lost her lives, their lives annually because of this disease are the reason of this project. After an extensive research, we can analyze the following points. Lack of timely diagnosis, inefficient diagnosis methods, lack of awareness about the disease and lack of location of the parasite and when it's contracted. And the question is, how might we detect tiny solium in early stages to prevent cysticercosis and without presenting severe symptoms? The answer is like, the biodegradable, non-invasive, and easily accessible test to detect the parasites in humans. You have only to take a small sample of the patient's feces with the head and wait a few minutes. The test will automatically indicate if you're positive or negative, but it means a color change in the paper. This will be possible through a copper antigen study based on ELISA, which, if the person is positive, will react to more than 200,000 eggs spilled in the feces. Our goal is to timely attend the disease in order to lower the social gap in the health sector, thus creating a venture dedicated to the research and development for solutions to unattended diseases. LECA's business model is based on a B2B distribution. 
our customers are public and private organizations and our potential customer and mainly user is our population living in a medium low income situations exposed to the disease in rural areas. Then our financials, our in initial investment is of $6,720. The direct costs are $5.11. The indirect costs are $3,410. The cost per unit is $5.79. The device price is of $15. The break-even point is for 344 tests to sell and it will be complete in the second year. And the revenue model is based on the sale of the public and private social sector. They have di direct donations from social organizations like UN or UNICEF and the 40% of the proceeds will be donated to treat the disease to people that are infected. The impact metrics of this project are how many tests are sold to private and public social organizations, number of test applications by population percentage, positive cases within the community and perception and approval of the test. Having a clear panorama of infected people and regions when it's present, it will be possible to have a complete epidemiological study to attack the disease on time, promoting timely detection. This will drastically reduce medical expenses to treat the disease and will improve the quality of life of 60,000 60, people in rural sector each year in Latin America. Like as journeys per year. Well, in the third year, we are looking for clinical validation and the certificates to enter to the market. Then in the second year, we're looking for strategic alliances and sales, starting the sales in regional level. And in the third year, we are looking to achieve a percentage of detection of the disease at least at 30% within the country and expand in a continental level. What am I going to do? The first thing that I'm going to do is to buy the materials to development of the test and start taking the most important step towards clinical validation. I'm sure that Impaction and Because International can help this initiative in different ways such as giving it an international exhibition to go further, mentoring with experts, and it's giving me the opportunity to make this dream come true. Thinking of a world without disease represents more than just health. It represents lifetime full well-being and equality within society. Neglected diseases are important. Minorities are important. We are all important. Let's help those who need us the most and with LECA say hello to the change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ximena. So judges will give you about a minute just to record um, your scores and then we'll open up for Q&A from each of y'all. So whenever y'all are ready, ask away. We have I had a question. Um, will this primarily be sold or used then within um, clinics or hospitals, or will it be available to purchase for somebody who um, suspects they might have a parasite who simply ate at ate, ate some street food? Okay, I mainly uh, plan this project to be used in the health brigades of uh, gover governmental organizations and that these brigades bring or give gave the give the the test to the persons that are in rural areas where it's the it's where mostly the parasite is presented but i also consider as a potential customer a person in the urban sector that also have this like you said this like thinking that he's or not infected and also the main, the main purpose of the project, even though if it's used in the rural sector or in the urban sector, is to promote the timely detection and the awareness about this disease. I don't know if I, if I answered the question. Okay, thank you. Hello, so good to connect with you and thanks for what you're doing. Quick question for you. Um, Talk to me a little bit about existing solutions, uh, because I know you're in the idea stage right now, but what are people doing currently? Are there tests like this out on the market? And how does your idea for, uh, for your solution compare to 
what's out there right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, this project is in a proof of, con proof of concept uh, stage. It's, all, it's also validated, the, the functionality of the project, uh, it's validated with biotechnology, uh, yes, engineering, and in the, in the part of production also. The, the, part, the interesting part of this, of this um, disease, mainly, it's because it's that the, um, this is like the first neglected diseases of all of the list. And even if, I don't know how to say it, even uh, it's like endemic in some parts of that and of these like countries like Latin America, Asia and Africa, there are no existing like uh, preventing tests to detect it, to detect it. The most commonly um, ways to detect that you are like, that you have also the cysticercosis in your brain, in the eyes or in, even in the muscles, uh, it's like with resonance, magnetic resonance uh, with uh, tomographies. And this also so like mm, expensive to all the people and no one, not the, like the, most of the people don't go and check themselves because it's too expensive and the medical treatment and all the cost that includes the medical treatments are so like like hi i don't know if i answer the question that's helpful thank you uh real quick follow up with me after i um have some connections with Global Brigades. The founder is a Marquette alum and they may be interested in, in helping out um, with this. They're working in a lot of the communities that you're looking to target. The second, kind of a follow on to Andrew's question, what happens when someone gets a positive test? How affordable is treatment? What is the treatment or medication that comes after the positive test? Okay, uh, the, this is the, the parts well, when the like the preventive preventing tre preventive treatment and the past treatment like combine because the the treatments also exist but the problem the main problem is to detect who's have the parasite and the treatment it's also like medicine and antiparasitaries uh, there are like uh, vaccines also but the, the thing and the problem, the main problem is that the epidemiological study of the disease, it's like too old, don't, the, the epidemiological study of this disease, it's not recent and that's the, the main problem because, and that's the main cause that the disease stays nowadays. And the, the treatments are, they they have also the hospitals and the clinics and the and the doctors have these like medication and these vaccines but the problem the main problem is that uh, they don't have idea where the regions that the parasite present and where and who's like infected Thank you so much, Zimena. Um, and the next, we're going to go to our third finalist, where it is Neha and Vidika who will be presenting. Thank you, Zimena. Bye, thank you. Okay, just share those with photos. And the challenge we are trying to solve is uh, second to oil. The passion and textile industry is the largest polluter in the world. They are responsible for approximately 90 million tons of solid waste dumped in landfills each year. The synthetic materials and clothes uh, do not degrade and cause pollution. They are also the biggest consumer of water, produ producing up 20% of water waste while also generating more greenhouse emissions. 
than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. Countries in the ASEAN region, uh, Philippines in particular, home to many garments and factories, there is no official textile recycling company. Consumers keeping up with the trend end up with the unwanted clothes that they usually choose to throw away. Our solution, we extend the life consumption of textile waste to reduce their in environmental impact. Our collected textile waste are transported to our recycling hub. They are sorted into different categories, types and usage. Good quality clothes are donated to victims of calamities. Textile that cannot be reused are cut into strips and we weave them to produce a new fabric. Some are then transformed to higher valued products, such as shoes and bags, home accessories, and new fabric. Our vision is a zero waste, beautiful world in which all people can enjoy clean and safety environment and secure and sustainable livelihoods. Our goals are to reduce environmental waste, promote circular economy, and sustainable passion, and provide opportunities for disadvantaged people. Our journey in coming up with this idea, uh, well, I love sewing clothes. Uh, I started sewing all clothes as young as seven years old. I used to sew shorts and bags using old clothes. I had no idea back then that it was recycling and upcycling. I have many friends from fashion and textile industry. I've witnessed how they just throw away the overstock, overstock textile and clothes as well as overstock uniforms in the offices. So I've come up with the idea to upcycle them. I find fulfillment in doing this as well. I'm doing what I love to do at the same time. I'm helping the environment and the planet. Our target customers are sustainable, conscious millennials and professionals, and people experiencing past passion consumer guilt. When it comes to financials, uh, we are a combination of for-profit and not-for-profit business that has social and environmental impact. For us to be sustainable, we have to earn profit. For us to collect more textile waste and turn them into higher valued products, we need revenue. We may depend on grants and angel investors at the start, but we aim to be financially sustainable through the sale of our products. Our impact metrics are, uh, I believe uh, our initiative could possibly change the life of millions of people if we scale globally. Our solution decreases landfill requirements lessens the use of virgin fibers, uh, reduces consumption of energy and water, uh, lessens pollution, and give job opportunities to disadvantaged people. We aim to be the venue that people will turn their textile waste to. If ethic becomes established, textile recycling will be a normal practice as one takes out their textile waste. We want ethic to have a branch in different ASEAN countries like Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, and etc. So far, we have a starting capital derived from founders' contribution. We also have talented shoe and bag artisans as well and good shoe manufacturing facility. We are already on the MVP stage and ready to start our first retail collections last year. However, Due to COVID and lockdowns in the Philippines, we had to stop our production. But we're positive we could start again after this competition. Our current impact, uh, we are in the MVP stage, uh, testing the viability of the essential core of our solution in action and continuously adapting to create value. We're ready to produce our first retail collections. So far, we have trained uh, 15 shoe, shoe artisans and 10 bug artisans. Uh, our plan to do in the next three years, uh, for the next uh, first year, uh, one year, uh, we're planning to promote our cause and our product, products outside the Philippines. 
uh, on the succeeding year, uh, we plan to establish branches in other parts of Asia, such as Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, etc. Uh, on the succeeding year three, uh, we plan to establish uh, branches in other parts of Asia and outside Asia. What are we looking for in this competition? Uh, 1,000 USD has a huge value in the Philippines. With that money, uh, we could start again the production of our first retail collections delayed by the COVID last 2020. Our biggest challenges are funds and majority of consumers aren't motivated to care. And there's no easy means to change their consumption habits. Sustainability is not yet in the DNA of many consumers. Fast fashion current model disincentivizes value-driven economies. Uh, in faction and because international will provide us ecosystem of support that our early stage startup needs right now, such as in infrastructure and trainings, will help our founding team with critical strategy and business plan, financial forecast, sales and marketing strategy, and roadmap as well as access to funding and other investors. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you. I believe, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> nervous. The judges will give you a minute and when you're ready, please ask away. I'm ready. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I, I see you have, you have an online website um, what what is your biggest market right now? Are you marketing locally in in markets in retail stores, or are you marketing online? Who who are your biggest consumers? Um, we're still in the MVP stage, mom. We're not selling the products yet. Okay. What what and what then? As a follow up, then what plans do you have for that? Would who who do you anticipate being your biggest consumers, your, your, your purchasers. Come again. Who, who do you plan on marketing your products to? Who, who do you think will be buying your products most? People who will be purchasing online or? I guess online and uh, uh, in person. Cheryl, thanks for the presentation. Um, <laughs> I'm very <nervous>. close. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to ask a, per, a pretty basic question. I want you to take me just down to very simply again the model. Um, cuz again I know you're in more of the early stages the kind of the idea MVP stage. Uh, but but tell me more about what you know what 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 this means. Uh, what the model is. Is it um, is it uh, Again, the excess fabric, the excess waste that you're then taking and then making products out of. Uh, who are you getting that excess material from? Um, are the products themselves uh, are? Is there some uniqueness to them besides the fact that you're using uh, you know, potential waste? Um, tell me more again about the basics of the model here. We collect uh, textile waste from uh, offices or and uh, garment factories. Then uh, 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 they are sorted into different categories. Uh, good quality clothes are donated to victims of calamities. And those that cannot be reused uh, are cut into strips and we weave them to, to produce a new fabric. And uh, some are then transformed to uh, higher valued products such as shoes and bags, home accessories, and yes, home accessories. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, I really liked hearing your story about how you started sewing many years ago and, and how passionate you are about this. Can you talk a little bit more about the employees that are helping you or that you hope to be training? How do you find them and what does the training program look like? Um, uh, it, uh, we train them to, uh, in making shoes and bugs. 
do they come to you knowing how to sew and manufacture and make the products or do you have to teach them? Uh, uh, we choose uh, those from uh, disadvantaged, uh, underprivileged. Uh, those are Great, thank you. people. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Really appreciate it. And thank you, mm -hmm. judges. So we'll give you um, until we transition to our final finalist, which is Ichor Joshua, who will be speaking to y'all. Um, please fill in your uh, scoring sheets and then we will have Ichor on stage. Um, so we'll give you a minute and now the judges will go and um, deliberate and they will come back in about 15, 20 minutes to announce the winner. And then in the meantime, we will actually be um, having hearing from some of our partners. So Shivani. Yes, hi uh, judges. So I just dropped a message in um, the chat. So if you wanna join me in that room, um, I will see you over there. And then we'll Joyce join back in for the event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, judges. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our partner that we've been working very closely with on this competition. So Emily, if you wanna introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about Because International and uh, the projects you're all working on different organizations. Yes, hi Bora, nice to see you. I'm very excited about this competition. As has been said, this is our third year partnering with uh, Impaction. Um, the first year we had a thousand applicants and this year we've had 369 applicants. So it's exciting to see this grow and look forward to seeing next year <laughs> the applicants we get. Uh, I am Emily Allen. I'm the director of programs at Because International. Uh, I, I oversee both our Shoe That Grows program and our Pursuit program. Uh, our mission at Because is to use products as solutions to alleviate poverty by meeting immediate needs and creating opportunities for empowerment. Uh, we, we started uh, our nonprofit really with a shoe that grows. And I, I don't know if any of you have you've heard of it. Look it up. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to find it. But it's a, a sandal that grows five sizes. And we've given 300,000 pairs away to uh, over 100 countries. Uh, to help children um, be able to attend school. Um, so I, I, I liked the, that you guys were talking with the Educase about how you incorporate other products and the shoe that grows could be one of them. Um, but off of, off of all of that learning, uh, we decided to create an, in, an incubator program to help other people who have products of their own, um, socially innovative products to bring their products to market and help them just get through this, the hard part of starting uh, starting a business and starting with your social innovation. So our, our incubator is a 10 week visual or a virtual incubator and we're focused on prod on production. We only work with products um, and social good products. Um, and our goal is to is just create jobs um, in the areas that you live. We know that job creation helps reduce poverty and, um, and the products you are making can make a difference um, in your own communities. And we're excited that, to help you with your own businesses to grow them. Uh, our, our incubator has four pillars. Uh, the first is training. We provide a 10 week online training. You uh, join about, we, we have 15 to 20 entrepreneurs per cohort this year. And we have two cohorts a year, one in April and then again, one in September. Uh, the training covers all manner of topics from marketing to uh, product development, um, sales, goal setting. Uh, we hit on different topics every week week with you. Um, and then you network with the other entrepreneurs. Every week we expect you to be in, in contact with each other. You have so much to learn from one another, so many ways to help each other. So we want to connect you with each other uh, to help you through that process. So networking is one of our other pillars. Um, we also help network with other entrepreneurs as um, as one of the judges uh, said earlier, she knew someone who could who could help one of the entrepreneurs who presented today. I believe it was Lika, uh, Lika uh, the the testing kit. So uh, we we also want to help connect you with people who say, oh, I know someone who can help you. Uh, so we do a lot of mentor mentorship uh, that way or networking that way. And then our third pillar pillar is mentor is mentoring. We connect you with what we call a CEO advisor. And CEO advisors work directly directly with you during a 10-week program. They meet one-on-one -on -one with you, 
um, and help you through the problem that you have that you're struggling with most to help you take your business to the to the next level, make that next step in your business. And then lastly, we help connect or provide funding for entrepreneurs that are involved in the pursuit program to date because international has given about $10,000 um, in grants to our entrepreneurs. Um, and this year we have $30,000 as our goal to give away to our entrepreneurs between our two, two cohorts. Um, we've also connected about uh, two, our entrepreneurs with about $250,000 in funding from private investors um, and we'll continue to do that and also connecting entrepreneurs with international markets um, here in the US. Uh, this year we'll work with 30 entrepreneurs, so we're very excited about that. Um, and we'll be we'll be choosing uh, from a number. We've had applications from all over the world. Um, we have already uh, been screening through the Impaction <laughs> entrepreneurs. There's so many, but such amazing ideas. Um, and look forward to uh, this year working with entrepreneurs like yourselves to help you with with bringing your your product to market or whatever goal might help you get to the next step of your business. So glad to be here, glad to be partnering, looking forward to um, seeing who wins this competition today. Thank you so much, Emily. It's been a pleasure getting to work with you and also learn more about Because International. And I mean, I give it to the judges out of 369 applications to five. <laughs> it's amazing. And it's a tough decision because all five were really great. So yeah, we do value your yeah. partnership a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's been fun. I've, I've been watching this competition since, since December when it launched watching the applicants and just thrilled to see who's ended up here at the top five. Yes, it's exciting. We're minutes away from announcing the winner. So this is really great. Thank you so much, Emily. Our next speaker is Jamie Applegate. He is a senior director of innovation at United Way in Dallas. So let me invite Jamie on. Thank you, Emily, and we will see you soon. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jamie Applegate and I'm the Senior Director of Innovation at United Way of Metropolitan Dallas. Uh, thank you, Bora, uh, Shivani and the whole Impaction slash Impactionable team uh, for inviting me to this amazing event um, and share a little bit about our social innovation work. Um, United Way has been a community leader in Dallas for over 90 years and we expanded into social innovation programming in 2013 with the introduction of the Social Innovation Accelerator uh, which is a 10 month program that seeks to identify, fund and scale new and innovative ventures that solves problems uh, in the fields of education, health and income. Uh, so each year we implement a cohort of 10 organizations that are having impact in North Texas. Uh, these ventures can be nonprofits or for profits and they can be new ventures or established organizations that are looking to implement a new program. Um, our sort of foundational belief uh, is that we can offer three types of capital that are critical to successful uh, growth and scaling. So financial capital, every fellow is guaranteed at least $25,000 in funding uh, and unrestricted dollars um, and can earn more through uh, some competitions we have. Uh, human capital, which is uh, received through expert instruction, mentorship and leadership coaching uh, and social capital. So we have a pretty strong local network and reputation and we utilize that to promote the organizations that are in our uh, accelerator program and give them valuable exposure. Um, and our program has three components. So our boot camp is a six week professional and organizational development program uh, led by content experts to ensure that each venture has the organizational capacity it needs to successfully grow and scale. And each organization uh, receives $10,000 upon completion of boot camp. So you get paid to show up and learn valuable skills. Uh, the next stage is the Milestone Accelerator. So it's a five month period in which we pair every venture with a team of mentors and they work on milestones. So they set three milestones and when they accomplish them, they get paid $5,000. So $5,000 for each milestone. And then the last piece of our program is the Pitch, which is a large scale social innovation competition uh, in which five of our 10 fellows compete for a total of $250,000 in prizes and one venture gets named the social innovator of the year. Um, so this, this, the accelerator is for organizations that have already launched um, and are, have a validated business model. Uh, we are implementing a, an incubator program for idea and early stage ventures, uh, specifically those that are led by women and people of color. Um, and that's gonna sort of launch in the fall of 2021. 
So hopefully we'll share more information with this group soon. Um, if you do, if you do want to connect about it, please feel free to email me. I'll put my email in the in the chat, and I'll also put uh, our organization's website. Um, but thank you so much, Bora, for the time. Uh, this is such a great competition. It was great to see the pitches, uh, and I'm excited to see who who wins. Thanks. Yes, thank you so much, Jamie. And I'm looking forward to future partnerships with United Way. And um, next up, we're going to have Erin Clausen. She is the investment manager at Iron Tech. Hey everybody. Hi, hey, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me on today. Of course. I do have a couple of slides to share actually. Oh yeah, of course. Right now. You should have it available. All right. Okay, so um, as Bora said, my name is Erin Clausen. I am the investment manager at Iron Tech. Um, we are a modern industrial co-working space and technology hub. Um, we're located right on the Wisconsin and Illinois border in Beloit. Um, we're a small city just shy of 40,000 residents. Um, and we have had Iron Tech um, open since 2016. Um, and we've expanded a couple of times since then. Um, we've got a, a really cool space. It used to be a foundry. Um, we've repurposed about 20,000 square feet of this. This is a, a photo from when we first opened. Um, it has changed a lot since then, but um, we are owned by Hendricks Commercial Properties, um, which is a real estate um, development and investment company. Um, we have property in about 32 states currently, um, but our, our main focus is the Beloit area. Um, we're located on the Ironworks campus, which is right along the Rock River. Um, and these are just some photos that I put together of some of the work, the renovations that we've done to the campus here where we're located. Um, so what we're trying to do here in a community that was, that was hit really hard when um, this foundry that we're located in went out of business, um, they put about 3,000 people out of jobs. And our goal is to renovate um, the property piece by piece until we get that many people back in um, working for these different com different companies on campus. Um, and so Iron Tech is kind of the, um, the nucleus for all of that. It's where we host all of our networking events. It's where we um, meet with startups and try to engage them in our community. Um, and that's actually how um, we got connected with Shivani and the team at Impaction. And um, they participated in the G-Beta program, which is um, a seven-week accelerator for early stage companies with local roots. Um, they graduated a couple of cohorts ago, and that's how we got hooked up with them um, and heard about the social impact competition. And so that's something that we're interested in doing here in Beloit. Um, we think that it could have a really, a really great impact on our community. Um, something else that we've started doing recently um, is uh, another entity called Great Collar Ventures. Um, and like I said, my role is investment manager. And so what we've started doing is actually investing in some of the companies that are going through this programming um, and trying to help them grow here locally. Um, so we're looking forward to working with Impaction moving forward, hopefully as soon as we can be hosting some events in person again, we'd love to do a competition here in Beloit. Um, and we are on all of the social channels. If anybody wants to follow us, I've got our handles up here um, where you can learn more about what we're doing on a daily basis. Um, it was great to hear from Emily at Because International and um, how you guys have been working with Impaction um, and just want to say congratulations to the five founders who pitched today. You guys all did an amazing job and have some really awesome ideas. So, um, and good luck to the judges in making their decision. Thank you so much, Erin. It was a pleasure. It's a pleasure meeting you and we'll, we look forward to working with you in the future when everything goes back to normal, hopefully sooner than later. Right. Um, so thank you everyone. So I am now going to bring back all the finalists on stage and Emily, I'm gonna bring back you as well.
trying to add everyone. Perfect. And then for everyone, I also linked for everyone who's attending, I linked our follow us on our Facebook page so you can know more about what Impaction, Impactionable, since we changed our name, is doing. Um, follow, uh, sign up for our newsletter so you can be also more, so you can know when we have our next competitions. And one of our biggest things is also our job portal and our video sessions. So if anyone is either looking for a job or is a job creator and wants to partner with us, please let us know. And then our video sessions of any of the finalists or any of anyone who's attending who's an entrepreneur and wants to be part of our Sunday video sessions, uh, please let us know. We would love to host you. And I'm also going to sign up for our forms for partnership opportunities. So if anyone wants to partner with us, um, I've linked the form on there as well. And then, um, so the judges should be, they're still de deliberating, but they should be here any minute now. I just wanna give the finalists just a few sec minutes. Like, does anyone have any final questions or thoughts? Um, how was your experience throughout, you know, three months, like I feel like it was just yesterday when we looked at all the applications, but it's been three months. So if anyone wants to talk about their experience or um, kind of what y'all thought throughout the process. Um, I, I think it was helpful for us to kind of, um, it kind of forced us to think and reevaluate our business because I think what happens is when you're running a startup, you just get so absorbed into that world and, you know, the day to day that actually, you know, making a business model canvas and kind of reassessing everything is a good way to just kind of check everything again and get a new perspective. So I think it was helpful. Thank you, Neha. Anyone else have any? Oh. Uh, our experience with uh, Impaction Social Innovation Competition has been amazing. It has given us an opportunity to review our business models, to go over our impact, and to generally check what we stand for. Mm -hmm. So I sincerely want to appreciate uh, Impaction and Because International for bringing up this competition. Sending you lots of love from Nigeria. Uh, thank you. And it's amazing. Like, um, can anyone, can everyone say where they're located? I know each of you are in uh, Nigeria, Vidika, Niha, and then we'll just go down. So everyone can see like, this is worldwide. Um, it's not only the US. So it's amazing to see how many applicants from all over have applied. So um, just everyone can go down and say where they're located. Um, I can start. I'm in Kathmandu, Nepal right now. So midnight for me <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> um, yeah and i'm uh usually in london but at the moment i'm in abu dhabi um so yeah it's uh, 10 30 p.m for me getting sleepy <laughs> oh my gosh zimena um i'm from um, mexico i'm from mexico uh, okay yeah i'm from mexico now it's like uh 12 33 of the day and it's really sunny and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, you're muted, Cheryl. Let me unmute you. Yeah, yeah I'm from the Philippines. Uh, it's uh, two thirty four a.m. here. Uh, thank you for <laughs> for being one of the participants. <laughs> thank I you, learned Cheryl. a lot. <laughs> My first time to pitch. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> I'm very nervous. <laughs> but thank you. Ismail? Oh, you're still muted. Yeah, Perfect. I'm from Cameroon, and uh, right now here it's 7.30 p.m., so it's almost night now. I'm happy to be here. Impaction is a, is a great initiative. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, Ismail. Uh, thank Eat you so much, Ismail.
what time is it in where you are in Nigeria? Yes, it's seven thirty-four in Nigeria. <laughs> seven thirty-four p.m. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Um, I'm in Dallas, Texas, and it's twelve thirty p.m. and it's sunny and rainy, but you know we had a winter storm weeks ago, and we can't handle winter storms in Texas, but we're alive. <laughs> Emily. I'm uh, from, I'm, I'm, you guys, I'm working on my closet, which is a story for almost everybody, but the cat has decided to come <laughs> and take over. Um, but I'm in Boise, or actually Nampa, Idaho, uh, Northwest US. So. And then they are here. So I'm gonna let the judges in. Hello, judges. Hello. Everyone's here, so we are ready when you are to announce the winner. All right, well, I will jump in. And again, thanks to each of you for all the hard work um, that you've done outside of the competition and within the competition uh, and for your presentations today. We did take a little while because we had some great conversation um, about the ideas about the presentations about what you've done already, the potential for growth from here, so many things uh, to factor in. Um, and in the end, uh, I'd like to announce the winner uh, of the competition, Educase. Great job uh, to both of you and your team, uh, the idea that works so far, uh, excited to uh, award you with the prize money as well as uh, support you moving forward. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, really happy, and I think we are really inspired by all of the all of the competitors. And we were kind of chatting to ourselves, like, "Wow, what a great idea! Oh, this is a great idea. That's a good." So, um, yeah, I think thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a great experience, and it was so great learning from everyone. So, looking forward to hearing more from everyone again. Awesome, thank you guys and congratulations. Um, I am gonna actually ask Sarah to introduce a special surprise that we have. Thanks to um, Teresa and her team at Leadership Boys. Um, but yes, thank you and Sarah, go for it. Okay, we had a team that um, was part of the judging for the first couple of rounds and they as a team have um, uh, raise some funds to be able to offer a second place prize. Um, so as a runner up, we would like to give out a second place prize of $500 and that is going to go to Geopika. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Wonderful. So great. And congratulations to all the five finalists and congratulations to our winner and then our second prize winner. I will now turn it over to Emily so she can announce who will be in the incubator. Yeah, congratulations to all of you for making it this far and then um, to the two of you as well for your for your prizes. You all did fantastically well. Nice work. Um, you know, from this competition, we've already selected five entrepreneurs. They didn't make it to this stage, um, but uh, the five are Eco Vaughn, Recharka, SafePad, Ecolu, and Salubata. Those are all entrepreneurs that had gotten, I think, to the top 20, uh, maybe, and their ideas were just so wonderful. We felt like we could help them through the Pursuit Incubator, so we have invited them already, and we're excited to also invite the two winners today, Educase, Educase and, um, and GeoPika to, to join our incubator. So we'll be in touch with you soon. And the other three of you, we're excited to inter maybe have another interview this next week and see if uh, you'd be a good fit for our program as well. Uh, so looking forward to working with the two of you at least, and we'll be in contact soon with all five of you. Perfect, thank you so much, Emily. And again, thank you so much everyone for attending, but thankful to, thankful so much for all you five finalists. Y'all are amazing. Um, this is what Impaction is doing. 
and also because international and we could not do it without your partnership. So we're just thankful to have all of y'all and just know that it's amazing to see so many creative ideas from all over the world and not just in the States. So keep leaping and keep growing. And now let's turn it over to Shivani. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll be really quick. Um, I wanna give a quick shout out to all of our judges, round one, round two, round three for dedicating their time today. And it's a Monday, so um, thank you especially for being here today. Um, could not could not be uh, more excited to work with you and all of the mentorship um, that you bring forward when, in your own work. Um, thank you to Because International, Emily, Andrew, Sarah, um, thank you so much for this partnership. Thank you for you know believing in us um, three years ago. So I really appreciate that. And um, finally, congratulations to the finalists, the participants in the incubator, um, every applicant that applied to this competition in the first place. Like I said, you're doing amazing work and we can't wait to see more of it. So I'm gonna close it out um, and if, uh, anyone else has anything to share we'll be around for a little bit but thank you so much everyone this this is a community community effort really appreciate it thank you guys see you soon thank you thank you bye, -bye.